Let's do the same example from before, except let's use the future value function inside of Excel. Let's say you just deposited $100 into a savings account that has a 6% interest rate, or APR, which is compounded yearly. Let's say that we wanted to know the balance in our savings account at the beginning of each of the 20 years. To do this, Excel's future value function is really helpful. Let's first think about our inputs. First, let's identify all of the parts. Our present value is 100, our interest rate is 6%, the period or year will be the year that we currently are in. So with this in mind, let's type equals FV for future value. And when we open the parentheses, we see that future value actually takes five arguments, three mandatory, two optional. Rate, which is the interest rate or the rate of return. NPER, which is the number of periods. Payment, which is any recurring payment every period. PV, or the present value of your money. And then the type, which means it compounds either at the beginning of the period or the end of the period. The default is end of the period, and typically that's what we use. So to do this, we choose 6% as our rate, lock that reference, choose our year as our end per because that's our number of periods. There's no payment, so I'm just gonna add another comma. Then I'm gonna put $100 as the present value of our money, also locking this cell. When we hit enter, Excel tells us that the balance at the beginning of period one is negative 106. We know that the amount 106 is correct, but why is it negative? Let's open up the formula and investigate. In Excel's future value formula, it interprets our present value as a cash inflow because we inputted positive 100 as our present value. Since we are trying to calculate it from the lender's perspective, we would actually want to represent the present value as a negative number because that person, the saver, is giving their money to the bank and therefore sees a decrease in the cash that they have. Therefore, we need to go back into our formula and negate the present value. Now, when we hit enter, we see the 106 that we expect, and we can use the fill handle now to click and drag it down. Going down to the bottom, we can see that the amounts are still the same as they were from our previous schedules. 